All right, guys, if you've been around my channel for any time at all, you know that I love camping, car camping, all sorts of camping, and I'm a bit of a gear geek. So today I'm gonna to talk about some of my favorite gadgets or pieces of gear that I have found and love for car camping. Uh, but before I do, if you don't have the cash laying around for any of these things, please do not let it slow your roll. Put gas in your tank first, and then if you've got some extra change hanging around, then uh, geek out with me on some of these things. All right, the first thing is this Radiate Portable Campfire. Now, Sadie and I got this last year as a gift, and at first I was a little bit skeptical because I tend to like real fires, but we used it a bunch, and this is actually another one that we bought, but it's basically just a giant candle in a tin um, can, and all you need to do is light it with a match, and you've got yourself a little warming fire that's super quick. You don't need to search for wood, or if you don't have campfire wood, um, yeah, you're set to go. And then when you're done, you just pop the lid back on it, it goes out, and then you let it cool down, and you toss it back in your car. So it's a nice, quick, easy way for a little campfire um, in situations when you don't have time or resources to do a real one, or you're not allowed to, um, like up skiing, you know, things like that. The second thing is actually a few things, and that is my coffee making kit. So if you saw my other video, you know I'm a huge fan of the AeroPress Go. Um, use this thing pretty much every day at home or when I'm camping. Nice compact little kit, makes delicious coffee. And then this I am really excited about, just got it recently. It's a vessel grinder. Um, I had a old cheap one that was pretty janky, started falling apart here recently. And so I got this thing and it is amazing, just super smooth, really consistent, grinds, the burr grinder, and from what I've been taught by people who do the other stuff is fresh and consistent coffee grinds are the key to good coffee, so here we go. Next up is my jet boil. Again, if you've seen my other video on these things, there's a variety of options for different uses, but regardless of which one you choose, these things are awesome, and to make a good cup of coffee, you need hot water, so. This is a tool for that. And then use this for all sorts of different things for making dehydrated meals. Or if you get um, a pot or a pan with it, like I've got, you can cook meals straight up and it's a nice compact little kit that you can use car camping or when you're backpacking or an emergency at home. If your power goes out, you need coffee. Next up is this little NOCO battery pack. And it is a little battery pack that has a set of jumper cables on it that you just connect up to your battery and you can jumpstart your car. Now, I had never used one of these until about a year ago when I started having issues with my car battery um, getting drained. And it was just kind of a pain to you know flag people down. And then I was a little bit concerned that if I um, went out and was camping, didn't have anybody jump me, then I'd have to call somebody. And so this was, this has been awesome. Used it a handful of times on my car because I ended up having a loose post on my battery that uh, um, left me stranded a few times and then same with my truck. So it does great, just gives a little little kick, gets your car started and then you don't have to flag anybody down or if you're out camping like this, you don't have to try to call somebody. Okay, now we've got this little handsaw. This is a Silky Pocket Boy. Um, they have a few different models, but this one's nice and compact. I mean, it's, I don't know, maybe seven inches and has a little case that comes with it. And this thing is incredible. It is a solid little handsaw. Um, I was first introduced to these things up in Alaska when I was doing fire up there. One of my crew bosses carried these around and used them for you know little trees, things like that, when they didn't have a chainsaw. And so got this, leave it in the car, and it is an excellent little tool for clearing you know little logs off the road or cutting firewood. Um, admittedly today, I got a new tool, a little uh, DeWalt saw, and so. We use that for all this firewood, but a lot of the time you use this. And you can even take this backpacking. So the silky saw. All right, here we got a headlamp. Now, if you go camping, you know you need a headlamp. And this thing is an awesome little lightweight um, headlamp. I was introduced to it by some ultralight backpack people, and um, I've loved it. It's rechargeable, really bright. I think it's like 200 and something lumens. And yeah, it's really compact has worked extremely well, and as long as you've got another uh, battery pack with you, you can just recharge it once it runs out, but lasts quite a while, so good headlamp. Okay, next is a battery pack. Now, I've got a couple options here. Um, you've probably seen, talk about these before, Jackery power stations. There's a few different options out there. This is what I've used, and I love it. 
It is phenomenal for charging laptops, cameras, phones, running a fan in the summer in the car, um, all sorts of stuff, and then it can recharge it off the car or off my little solar panel that I carry. But if you don't need that, or if you're going backpacking, then a much smaller battery pack is nice. Um, I've used this Anchor one for a while. I have a couple of them, depending on the trip length. I'll just bring one of these, just a little battery pack, perfect for charging your phone, satellite phone, um, headlamp, and then I've got one of these multi-charger cords here, and it's just got a few different uh, different plug styles. It's got the USB, and then your iPhone charger, micro USB, and um, yeah, so different options, and that way, charge whatever I need to off of this little pack. Okay, next up is the Garmin InReach Mini. This is a satellite texting phone. Um, I've had this for a few years now, and the reason I got it is I was out by myself one time a few years back, a few miles from the, the vehicle, and you know, another 30 miles from cell service, and I slipped and I fell down some rocks, and luckily I didn't get hurt other than just some bruises and scrapes, but uh, if I had, I would have been stuck out there until um, somebody, I guess, cared enough to come look, looking for me. Um, so yeah, I've had this ever since, and it just connects to my phone. I text through this um, from my phone. I can send my location back home um, to Sadie if I if I need to. Um, and I remember I did forget one time, and she almost called search and rescue, but uh, that's another story. So you can get one of these, stay in touch, share your location. You can track um, your your trip on this and they have good um, inexpensive month-to-month -month plans so you can cancel it or start it whenever you want to depending on how many texts you want to send out per month so definitely consider these if you're going out of cell service and doing anything moderately sketchy okay the next one is um, a app actually two different apps um, that I use all the time the first one is Gaia GPS and that's just a good tracking um, app that has all sorts of different layers that you can put on to you know, look at different terrain, satellite imagery, um, land ownership, things like that. And I use that all the time to track my hikes, runs, bikes, everything pretty much. Um, so that's, that's a go-to for tracking, seeing where I'm at. And then the other one is um, the dirt. Now the dirt is more of a trip planning and like car camping type of a an app they do have some backpacking um, campsites and locations as well but they've got a good database of all sorts of different campsites and then reviews from users of the app that you can go in view you know they have all the different amenities things that they include um, so that's awesome for finding campsites they also have land ownership overlays so you can see about public land when you're out um, out in the woods trying to camp. And then one of the cool features with this app is the route planning. So you can actually set like a start and end point if you're trying to do a road trip. And then you can set all sorts of different factors like how many miles you wanna travel in a day or hours um, on the road, how many um, miles you can go on a tank of gas and all sorts of different things. And it'll help guide you to find different campsites um, or parks on that route and then give you a whole trip itinerary that you can follow for the trip so we actually used that in alaska this summer and it was pretty cool so the gaia and the dirt apps all right next one is a little magnetic light now this is more specific to car camping um, they come with little magnetic strips on the back that have adhesive so you can stick them onto things i have them stuck inside of my car um, and then they also you know will stick to anything magnetic um, or metal, I mean. And so, yeah, it's just a cool little rechargeable LED light strip, super bright. I'll, I will stick them onto my, the side of my car when I'm around the car or on the inside of the car on those strips that I have set up and then easily rechargeable. So using that way, and then they even have little motion sensors built into them. So you put them up by your car and then as you're milling around, they'll kick on if you go into its little zone. Okay, next is set of bug nets. These are just fine little mesh nets that slip over um, your window on your door, open your door up, slip them down, and then close the door. And then you can roll down your window as far as you want so that you can have ventilation at night, or you can use these to keep sun out during the day um, if you just want a little shade over the window. So these are nice, especially in buggy areas. Water jug. You need water. This one's nice and compact, easy to carry around, and it has a little spout built into it. So. Works well for car climbing. Next up is the awning. Watch my other video about these things if you're curious as to which one I have. 
but uh, yeah, they're great for sun in the summer, give you a little shade. And in the winter, like right now, if it's raining or snowing as it just started to here recently, um, good to keep the snow out. And last but not least are these chairs and the table. These chairs are awesome. They're small little backpacking chairs, um, really lightweight, but surprisingly sturdy for even somebody like me. And you can take them backpacking if you want to, or if you're taking somebody who's newer, um, they're nice, just little creature comfort to have. So this is nice. And then if you're around the car, one of these little tables, it's a nice little cooking eating surface. All right, guys, those are some of my pit favorite pieces of gear. I will link all of them down below um, in the description. If you have any other ideas, please put them down below. I love geeking out on this stuff. Um, but like I said in the beginning, don't use these as crutches, please. If you don't have them, go camping anyways. You'll be fine. Um, it's it's getting out. That's you know the the important part, not the gear. So thanks for watching. Let's get this bad boy ripping. I forgot to talk about my lovely shovel, the broken handle. I broke this handle, cut it off. To make it like that? Think you want it as more? Yeah, it was a tactical move. It's a wood splitter, a predator defender, and a fire pit maker, and a fire extinguisher. There you go. And a vehicle recovery device. And a good tool for taking care of business when you dig a pit, because nobody likes surface shooters.